And welcome to another edition of Cataracts Digest, folks. I'm Cataracts broadcaster George Scott. Special edition. Today we've got uh, one of the better known names in senior hockey in Newfoundland and Labrador, Terry Ryan, joining us. Terry, thanks for taking the time just before your game today to come up and have a chat with us. Uh, no problem. It's I, I always like to talk senior hockey and, uh, you know, my whole family's from Grand Falls, so uh, my, my dad's side, and uh, it's a place I'm very familiar with. I want to start with that, actually. I want to go back and talk about early days of hockey. People here in Grand Falls, Windsor, know your dad. He grew up mm -hmm. playing hockey here, played in the Joan Shield series that we were talking about a minute ago for St. Mike's, and then went on to play some pro hockey. His career had pretty much ended by the time Terry Jr. came along, but uh, I'd like for you to talk a little bit about the relationship you had with your dad as a young fellow and his influence in getting you involved in the game of hockey. Sure. Well, I think like anything, you look up to your father, you know, growing up, or at least, you know, you, you try to be a success. I think if you're a kid, it's, it goes naturally to look at the biggest, you know, male influence in your life. So I don't think it was any fluke that I gravitated towards hockey because my dad played pro. But, you know, by the time my, my earliest memories, he was done playing. His biggest thing was, you know, get his schooling. I remember that that was his thing when, when he left. Uh, his goal was to get his schooling paid through, for through hockey. Everything else was bonus. So... Um, I guess he always stressed that. So early in my life, uh, you know, Dad, there was a little bit of pressure on me in Mount Pearl, too, because I, I developed early, uh, uh, you know, in Adam and Kiwi. I became one of the better-known players. And, you know, having him, so he, having him have the career that he'd had, I'm not saying that I took <laughs> it hard, but he, I think, didn't want to put pressure on me. So my okay. own personal games, if I asked him to go, he would. But most of his influence when he coached the Junior Blades and the Senior Blades in the 80s, and I would get to go to the practices, and, uh, you know, he'd let me skate with the team and, you know, collect pylons or whatever he needed done. But I was getting, you know, over 10 hours extra ice time a week, really. Uh, so that was the influence. And seeing how he coached and then, you know, when, when it became old enough to make my decisions uh, as far as, like, to go to the WHL, I could look at his influence because I knew that he was, uh, you know, experienced in the field. You know, a lot of times uh, people grow up with a parent who's had a level of success in the field, particular mm. sports feel the pressure to live up to that or, or maybe that the parent puts the pressure on the kid maybe you know your dad did well with, with professional hockey played in the uh, the WHA and the Minnesota Fighting Saints but never really got to the you know the, the big level and, and had a, a great career not to take anything away no, from I him. know I know but sometimes exactly I think you know no. you never felt pressure from your dad to say maybe you can surpass what I did or, or maybe live out my dream for me you know no I didn't <laughs> and that's the I think it, it was just his whole approach to life like I said um, you know, my dad, growing up in Grand Falls, and you know, he he, did, he wasn't uh, elite class or anything. He was a middle class family, and you know, five brothers and sisters. So, dad's goal was, to, you know, you, you you defend for yourself and go and, and his goal was to get his degree and, and get that paid for. Like I look at when my dad retired. He was one of the top scorers in the IHL. I have to think if he kept playing, you know, in the WHA at the time that, that he played one full year in the WHA, and it was you know, being bred as uh, you know brought along as the rival league to the nhl so and you know they gave him a better contract and that was the whole thing yeah. he was you know like he was saying you know you don't know who's got your back so you know i took the contract so i think in his eyes when he first came back i don't think he really regretted it but i know a few years later when he looked back he he's aware of the fact that he could have kept playing at least professionally and you know like his buddy jim munch say who grew up with him playing played in germany for a while you know he could have at least done something like that and, you know, I'm sure when he saw Donny House and these guys go and play in the NHL, maybe, you know, in a way, I, I don't, I know it was never jealousy. He was never, dad's really proud of players that have.